You know, after a while, it can get boring, these certain things that you start to practice and they all start sounding the same. So just to make it a little bit fun to practice with, I created a groove that you guys can, it's actually pretty simple, it's based off of the mode. So if you guys have any idea what the modes are, if this is your first time hearing that word, you wanna check out the modes course so you can get caught up and then you can come back here and do all of these crazy, fun, cool grooves with us. <laughs> So this was based, as you guys can see, as you probably already saw, this was based off of a Mixolydian scale. I'm in the key of D flat, okay? So D flat, I'm not in tune, which is not good. <laughs> Let me tune up real quick. <laughs> I don't know how that got out of tune. Okay, there we go. So back in tune now, sorry about that. So if you heard that first part and it was a little out of tune and I just remembered, I changed strings, uh, last week and my strings still aren't acclimated to the bass uh, and I didn't think about that because it's been a while since I changed them. So yeah, anyway, back in tune. This is based off of a D flat Mixolydian scale. So going from the three to the four to the sharp four to the five. Okay, in the beginning when I did that and walked up that bass line, so I'm in the key of D flat, my three would be F, my four would be G flat or F sharp. If I walk it up again, I have G, and then I have A flat there, okay? So, that's basically the gist of that bass line, the lower bass line. But now walking up and doing the line, there's two things I wanted to mention about that line, of why I did it and what it actually is, okay? So walking up here. So starting on this F, on the G string, now I could have walked it down. The difference between playing it there and playing it down the fretboard, it has a different tone. So let me show you the difference between that. And then, you see the difference, it has a different tone when you're sliding down the string and playing all of those notes on one string versus bringing it up the scale, which we are usually accustomed to playing it in a scale form. And I know that probably goes against what I'm saying or goes against what I've said before, but sometimes the feel is what you want and the sound and the tone is what you want for that. Uh, and you kind of, you can't get around it. So just, what I'm also doing is I'm muting that string. I'm not using a palm mute technique. I'm actually muting it with my right, well, excuse me, not right hand, with my left hand. I'm muting that note with my left hand. And the way to do that is actually play each note with your first or second finger so your third and fourth finger can actually mute the string above it or mute the rest of the string that's in front of it. So let me give you an example. If I play everything with my pinky or my fourth finger, I can't mute the string because the string doesn't mute below the note. You're not able to do that. So if I play with my first finger, I can use the rest of my fingers to mute that note. And I'm muting it ever so slightly. It's not really a, a lot of uh, muffling or a lot of choke to that note. It's very subtle. I just don't want it to ring, okay? So the, that's the difference between the two directions or the two positions that I'm using. And let's go with this. I'm playing the Mixolydian scale. You guys remember that? We're in the key of D flat Mixolydian. If you remember the shape of that, you can create that scale. You have two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. Okay, so if you just memorize that and play it everywhere on the fretboard, you should be able to identify what a Mixolydian scale is. And that line alone, that should be able to tell you, okay, Mixolydian mode. You'll start hearing that more and more and more. So let's go piece by piece. All whole steps. <laughs> <laughs> 
right? From the first note. First note, hold step back, hold step back, hold step back. Very simple. Hitting that first note twice. All right, half step there. And I have this written out as well, like I said. Kind of playing off of that mixolydian scale if I'm starting right here to D flat. And then I'm leading up to the third note. A half step below that. You'll see that move a lot. You'll see I, I actually play that move a ton. Same exact move, that half step movement. You hear it everywhere. It's very common and very popular in bebop, um, uh, bebop lines or scales, uh, and soloing and improvising and things like that. Uh, very useful. Uh, walking it down the seventh note of the Mixolydian scale, leading up a half step before the third note, the root note, the sixth note, and then the fifth note. Okay, so when I say the sixth note, that B flat is actually the sixth note of the D flat Mixolydian scale. It's just an octave lower. So when I call out these numbers and I say six, the six is actually the same note, just in a different place. That scale degree is still the same. So I want you guys to understand that. So when I say six, and he's like, how is that six when it's lower than the note that you're playing? It's still considered a six. It's still considered the sixth note of the scale because it's exactly the same. The octaves are the same. You just call it the same number. Just makes it a little bit simpler. You don't have to, you know, have all of these either negative numbers or <laughs> positive numbers or uh, the, you know, going up to 14, 15, 16, 17. You don't have to do all of that. You can just still call it that same number. Now, the fingering that you want to use for this, it's a little tricky. That move has always um, caused problems sometimes for me and, and a lot of other people that I've, I've, you know, run across. Okay, so first finger starts that note on the third fret. Fourth, second, now I'm talking finger numbers now. Fourth, second, first, second. Now I'm shifting up with my fourth finger here to the one of the root note. Six with my first finger. The sixth scale degree with my first finger. Let me clarify that. And then fifth scale degree with my fourth finger. Okay, you got it? So that's pretty, that's really pretty much it. That's the whole entire line. Uh, but anyway, I'll play this over again and uh, take your notes. Um, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. Um, and take it slow. Just, you know, take it slow. You don't have to go the speed that I was going. Uh, just slowly, gradually increase the speed. Okay? Um, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. Like I said already, I'm sure I did. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. This, this is what I'm here for. If you guys want even more, uh, I actually have a lot more. So this is just the first, uh, well, not even the first. We've done this tons of times before. But this is, you know, one of many that will come. I'll see you guys in the next one.